This video gives some properties of eigenvalues of matrices. Eigenvalues for triangular matrices are especially easy to compute. Let's see what we get when we find the eigenvalues for this triangular matrix, B. We can find the eigenvalues for B by computing the determinant of B minus lambda i, setting it equal to zero, and solving for lambda. Since the matrix lambda i has lambdas on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, when we take b and subtract lambda i, we're just subtracting a lambda along each of the diagonal entries. Now we need to take the determinant of this and set it equal to zero. We saw in a previous video that the determinant of a triangular matrix is just the product of the diagonal entries. And since the original b was a triangular matrix, the matrix B minus lambda I is also a triangular matrix. So its determinant is five minus lambda times two minus lambda times nine minus lambda. When we set that equal to zero and solve, we get that lambda equals five, lambda equals two, or lambda equals nine. These are exactly the diagonal entries of B, and in general, the eigenvalues for a triangular matrix are the diagonal entries of the matrix. Next, let's relate the eigenvalues for a matrix to its trace and determinant. For this matrix C, the trace of C is 2 plus negative 1, which is 1, and its determinant is 2 times negative 1 minus 5 times 2, which works out to negative 12. To calculate C's eigenvalues, let's take the determinant of C minus lambda I, so that's equal to the determinant of 2 minus lambda to 5 minus 1 minus lambda, which works out to 2 minus lambda times negative 1 minus lambda minus 10, and we'll set that equal to 0 and simplify to get negative two minus two lambda plus lambda plus lambda squared minus 10 equals zero. So that means that lambda squared minus lambda minus 12 equals zero. We can factor that to get lambda minus four times lambda plus three equals zero. So lambda equals four or lambda equals negative three are the two eigenvalues. Notice that the sum of these two eigenvalues, 4 plus negative 3, gives us 1, which is the trace of C, while the product, 4 times negative 3, gives us negative 12, which is the determinant. Let's see what happens for this 3 by 3 triangular matrix D. We know that the trace of D is the sum of the diagonal entries, and because D is triangular, the determinant of D is the product of its diagonal entries. But as we saw on the previous slide, since D is triangular, its eigenvalues are exactly its diagonal entries, negative 3, 7, and 5. So the sum of the eigenvalues will be equal to the trace, and the product of the eigenvalues will be equal to the determinant. Although I won't prove it here, these facts are true for all matrices, not just two by two matrices and triangular matrix. For any n by n square matrix, the sum of its eigenvalues is equal to its trace, and the product of its eigenvalues is equal to the determinant. Next, let's see how the eigenvalues of A are related to the eigenvalues of A transpose and A inverse. If I want to find the eigenvalues for A transpose, I need to take the determinant of A transpose minus lambda i and set it equal to zero. The eigenvalues for A transpose are the lambdas that satisfy this equation. But since the identity matrix i is the same as its transpose, and in fact lambda times i is the same thing as its transpose, I can rewrite this equation as A transpose minus lambda i transpose. Recall that the transpose of a sum of matrices is the sum of the transposes. 
So I can rewrite this again as the determinant of a minus lambda i transpose. But recall also the determinant of a matrix's transpose is the same as the determinant of the original matrix. So I can rewrite my equation as the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. But the eigenvalues of a are the lambdas that satisfy this equation. Therefore, the eigenvalues of A transpose are the same as the eigenvalues of A. Next, let's think about the eigenvalues of A inverse and how they relate to the eigenvalues of A. We know that lambda is an eigenvalue for A with eigenvector x if and only if Ax equals lambda x where x is a non-zero vector. Multiplying both sides by a inverse, this is equivalent to saying that a inverse ax is equal to a inverse lambda x. Since a inverse times a is just the same as the identity, and the identity times x is just x, I can rewrite this left side as just x, and the right side, I'll pull the scalar lambda out. Pulling the lambda out is legit because if we multiply a inverse by lambda times x, we get entries that are lambda times as big as if we multiplied a inverse by x. Notice that our lambda cannot be zero because if it were, this whole right side would be zero and therefore our x vector would be zero and it wouldn't be a legitimate eigenvector. Since lambda is not zero, it's possible to multiply both sides of this equation by one over lambda. But wait. That's just the equation that x needs to satisfy to be an eigenvector for a inverse with eigenvalue one over lambda. Maybe it'll be a little bit more clear if I just switch the order, a inverse x equals one over lambda x. So this is true if and only if one over lambda is an eigenvalue for a inverse with eigenvector x. So the eigenvalues of a inverse are the reciprocals of the eigenvalues of A. And furthermore, the eigenvectors of A inverse are the same as the eigenvectors of A. So is it possible to have an eigenvalue of zero? In fact, it is. For example, if we look at the matrix one, zero, one, zero, then the determinant of a minus lambda i is the determinant of this matrix, which is one minus lambda times minus lambda minus zero. That equation is zero if lambda is one or lambda is zero. So we do indeed have an eigenvalue of zero as well as an eigenvalue of one for this matrix. But in fact, this can only happen for non-invertible matrices. A matrix A has an eigenvalue of zero if and only if A is not invertible. Let me explain why. We saw in a video about invertible matrices that a matrix A is invertible if and only if the equation Ax equals zero has only the solution x equals zero. So the negations of these statements are also equivalent. A is not invertible if and only if Ax equals zero does not have only one, the one solution x equals zero. x equals zero is still a solution. So this means that there must be some other x that's not zero that's also a solution. But the equation A times x is the zero vector is equivalent to saying a times x is zero times x, since zero times x is the zero vector. That's just the same thing as saying that zero is an eigenvalue for a. So we've shown that a is not invertible if and only if zero is an eigenvalue for a. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. Let me note that an equivalent way of saying this is that a matrix A does not 
have an eigenvalue of zero if and only if A is invertible. In this video, we covered a lot of properties of eigenvalues. We saw that the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are just the diagonal entries. We saw that the sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of the matrix, and the product of the eigenvalues is the determinant of the matrix. We saw that A and A transpose have the same eigenvalues, and that A and A inverse have reciprocal eigenvalues. Finally, we saw that a matrix A has an eigenvalue of zero if and only if it is not invertible. Or equivalently, A is invertible if and only if it does not have an eigenvalue of zero.